Archers have been a deadly force on the battlefield for most of human history. Uh, some of the famous archers from the past are the English Longwomen, the Cretan archers from ancient Greece, the Mongol horse archers, and the samurai from feudal Japan. Today, you'll be learning the basics of how to become an effective archer to pincushion your enemies in Chivalry 2 with some timestamps below. But um, before we begin, there are three disclaimers I want to say. One, after watching this video, you will not magically become a master archer. That takes a lot of practice and this video is only a guide for beginners who want to play as the longbowmen. There are nuances for crossbowmen and skirmishers that will not be covered in this video. Two, a lot of people will hate you for playing archer. Ignore them and enjoy playing the game how you like it. Uh, the bow throughout history has been so powerful because a person with minimal training can take down someone who's trained their whole life to use the sword. Uh, the same applies in this game, so uh, keep shooting the salty nobles. And three, the damage output of archers in general is lower than that of melee classes, so don't expect to be slaying out a lobby, especially as a beginner. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's, uh, let's get into the loadout, shall we? So, when you first start, start off as a longbowman, you only have access to the bow. The weapon shoots pretty fast, that has really low damage, so you should really focus on taking out injured enemies. So if you ever see anyone covered in blood, that should be like your first person to shoot. Or if you see anyone crawling on the ground, get them. But I'm gonna be real, the weapon is terrible, so um, you want to replace it with the, um, the war bow as soon as you can. Uh, okay. So, two, your sidearm really comes down to preference, so that's your secondary weapon. Um, for a new player, I recommend the knife because it has a very fast draw animation or draw out time so you can defend yourself in a pinch. But if you're more confident in your melee fighting capability, um, consider swapping to the short sword or the hatchet. But otherwise, if you ever get into a melee fight as an archer, you're in trouble. You're not a melee class, you only have 90 HP and 50 stamina. So you want to avoid melee fights as much as possible. And to help you with that, you do have the, uh, the spike trap. And the spike trap allows you to put distance between you and your opponent. It's like a physical barrier that you can that you can deploy so it looks just like this you just drop it boom it's a it's a barrier that enemies have to um break to get to get to you it's good for giving yourself some elevation it's good for traversing like um, different obstacles as well so if you want to like say um get to somewhere higher where you normally can't you get the spike trap and you can get, get to these areas so that's a big big advantage of using the spike trap okay for your other abilities you have a brazier so this is like a little fire thing that you can put on the ground. So you put it on the ground and you can dip your arrows into it to do extra fire damage. Your fire, your arrows will do extra fire damage. So that's always good. It can also be used to block opponents as well because it also acts like as a physical barrier. Um, so yeah, those are all of your abilities. Um, so let's get on to using the bow. Okay, so guys, I'm just jumping into a, a real game right now just to show you how to use the bow. Um, it's a bit glitched in the uh, offline practice mode, so that's why we're here. So, to use the bow, you left click to loose off a shot. That's like a quick shot. It won't deal the maximum amount of damage. Uh, but if you hold down left click, you'll see these two um, two horizontal like uh, bars on the left of the screen. As soon as I reach the center next to that yellow crosshair, sorry, the circle crosshair, you'll be able to do like a fully charged shot to deal the maximum amount of damage with the bow. Cool. Um, what you can do is also hold right click to zoom in. This will give you a better like sight picture of your target. And then you can press left click to shoot. And that's that's my preferred method of using the bow. Um, one thing to note that is um, when you charge up the bow, if you have a look in the bottom left hand of the screen, your stamina will get drained as you are holding the shot. And after a while, your character will get too tired and they'll have to like um, re release it just like that. So, if you can, uh, try not to hold uh, your bow charge for too long. It, ideally, you shoot as soon as those, those two horizontal bars reach the, the crosshair in the center. So you can deal uh, maximum damage. Okay, cool. Next, when you're targeting enemies, it's best to target enemies that are quite damaged already. Or, um, yeah. If you can't, just, um, sh just go ahead and shoot anyone. But in terms of leading your target and and uh, tracking your opponents, uh, you have to understand that this bow, when you shoot it, if you have a look at the arrow, there's some travel time. 
So, unless the enemy is standing still, you're gonna have to lead the target a little bit. You want to shoot where the enemy will be, not where they're standing right now. For example, hopefully I can get a better shot on the on the target moving away. This guy's moving to the right. We're gonna aim towards the right, and we hit him with the arrow. If we aim directly on them and lose the arrow, the arrow would not have reached them. So here, we're gonna aim to the right, and hopefully we'll have hit that vanguard. But anyway, that, that's that's the idea of leading your targets. Shoot where they where their target will be, not where they are standing. So now that we're back in the practice game, there is one thing that's useful that you can use as a um, as a beginner to gauge where your arrows are going. So for example, if you hold right click to charge up your shot and you left click to shoot, you can see the arrow fly through the air, right? But there's also an arrow cam. So if you shoot and then you hold the uh, mi middle mouse button, the uh, the scroll wheel, if you just press the button, you can see uh, where those arrows are actually going in real time. So that's uh, that's something useful that you can do like that, okay? And I think I forgot to show you the brazier, brazier ability earlier, but you can place it down. You dip your arrow into um, to the brazier, and uh, yes, now you have fire arrows that you can shoot. It's uh, it's fantastic for dealing extra damage. Okay. Alrighty. So now that you know how to use your loadout, let's get on to positioning. So there are three things that you need to know when it comes to positioning. The first one is to have good sight lines and effective range. So what that means is you want to put yourself in a position where you can have a good overview of the battlefield and see where all of the enemies are coming from. So for example, in this uh, picture, pretend you are the blue dot. You have a good view of the battlefield. You can see the enemies can come from three directions, straight ahead, to the left, or to the right. Those are the main places that you can um, or see where they're coming from. And you will be within effective range of roughly 20 to 30 meters. So from like roughly here, here, and here, you can start shooting the enemy. So you're within, within a good distance, and there will be plenty of enemies to come uh, to shoot at as well. So you're in a target-rich environment with a clear overview of the battlefield. All right. So the next thing to think about when you're positioning yourself is the uh, availability of cover and concealment. Okay. So that concealment, for example, if you are still the blue dot here, what cover you have is this uh, this horse statue, these rocks, uh, this little like I don't know wooden thing. It's all very good uh, cover and concealment. Plus, you also have a resupply box here as well, to um, so you can replenish your arrows, get bandages or something. It's perfect. So you have clear sight lines, and you got good cover and concealment in this situation. Alrighty, guys, I just want to go over some examples of cover and concealment. So, for example, this uh, this wagon with some rocks in it, this can be considered hard cover. So what that means is this is a barrier between you and the enemy. It will stop projectiles, and enemies cannot move through it. So it's hard cover. So if uh, archers shooting at you, the arrows will not be able to get to you because of, of this hard cover. Okay. Another example of hard cover would be like maybe rocks. So if there's anyone shooting from the buildings up there, you can use this rock as hard cover. Okay. In terms of concealment, concealment doesn't uh, stop projectiles from coming out to you. For example, like this this little tree, this little bush. This is just concealment. It obstructs the enemy's vision of you, so they have a harder time of pinpointing your location. And so you're less likely to get shot if you have concealment. So if you don't have any hard cover, look for like bushes or trees as concealment. Okay. So there are plenty of examples of like hard cover and concealment like all around the map. Um, you can also create your own little bit of uh, hard cover by using the the spike trap as well. Because I don't I don't think arrows can pass through these things. So can we have a look? Yeah, that may stop that may stop some arrows from getting to you. So you combine this with like with a bush, you get a bit of cover and concealment. And these ramps, they act as a bit of elevation as well. So you can get a bit of extra height, so you can shoot over um, shoot over your teammates, so you don't hit them in the back, and hit the enemies instead. So, um, there's that. Otherwise, um, if there's like no obvious like rocks or trees, you can always use like walls or something. So like this wall is a bit of like hard cover. Arrows cannot pass through this wall, and you can go back and forth. You charge up your shot, you come out, you shoot, you come back, Charge up your shot, move out, shoot, come back. Same little up here. You have like these little, uh, I forgot what it's called. But um, you can charge up your shot behind this wall, take a shot on someone, move back, and you'll be safe. Okay? 
um ramps and stuff also act as a bit of cover as well uh not this one in particular because there's like little holes oh, okay arrows can't pass through that but anyway say if there's someone on the other side and you want to shoot you can hide yourself behind this charge up your shot move up shoot them come back and they will not be able to return fire on you so that's uh, that's very useful uh let me find another example uh somewhere all right guys so another example of using like uh, ramps as like a bit of cover or concealment is like up here so what i like to do is get up here right and i can use like this ramp to um to go up pick my head up shoot some enemies come back down move up shoot come down again what's also good is that if you have the spike trap you can also place it here as well so like people who try to jump up can't actually um uh, get up they have a bit more trouble getting up uh towards this position so just put your spike trap here that can be a bit of a deterrent for people to try and get up. Otherwise, I also like to put my brazier here at the top as well. So what that means is, like, I got a um, I got like a fire source, and I got some extra cover here, because this brazier also blocks arrows. So it can be very useful. So I can move up, shoot my enemies, come back down, hide, and just keep keep on re repeating that. It's good. Oh, and one more thing to mention, like, there will always be traps, like, all around the map. You can shoot them with, like, your arrows to, to drop them and kill unsuspecting uh, enemies as well. So, um, keep, keep that in mind. But also, like, your enemies can use it against you as well, so be careful. Cool. The final thing to think about is your escape plan. Because if your position gets overrun, you need somewhere to go. You need somewhere to run so you don't get into a melee fight. So, pretend you're still that blue dot. You are shooting people within these three lanes. This town center gets overrun. The next position you're going to run to is right here. So from here, you can continue to uh, to shoot the enemy from. Okay guys, so I just want to go over that example that I just showed you about um, having a good fighting position. So <clears throat> in, in our little example in the overview, this is where we were standing. So this is what it looks like to have three good um, sight lines. So I can see enemies coming down from this avenue this avenue and this avenue so that is a uh, very good sight lines the enemies will be like roughly um over there over there or over here when we shoot so we're within good distance we can see where all the enemies are coming from so we're unlikely to get um get flanked if we are concerned about getting shot or getting seen from too many angles we can always drop down and we can isolate each sight line what that means is we can focus on just shooting this sight line or this sight line and we'll be covered from one or the other um, by this uh, little thing here. Uh, the statue, sorry. So that's good. So if this town gets overrun, as in like the enemies make their way towards like roughly here, roughly here, we can fall back to the next fighting position, which will be in here. We can put down like a brazier to like help uh, block block enemies. And we can just uh, take our shots from over here. So we got like a good sight line on anyone coming from this avenue, this avenue, that avenue. Okay. And if we ever need to abandon this position we can always run that way or run run this way um to get to safety uh really and so that's the whole idea of archer gameplay you have a fighting position that's really good with uh, um, lots of enemies to to shoot um as soon as it overrun it gets overrun you move on to the next position like so and you keep on moving on to the next position and then the next position that's all I wanted to cover for how to play uh, the Archer class, basically. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them down in the comment section below. If you are a veteran player and you have any tips for new players on how to play Archer, also leave that in the comment section below as well. And so now what I'm going to do now is uh, put up a gameplay and tell you about really what's going through my mind when playing Archer so you have a better understanding of how to really uh, position yourself and play through a game. It's uh, not the best gameplay out there, but it's somewhat realistic because you should not expect to be like um, killing like a ton of uh, enemies uh, when you're using the short bow and when you're first starting out on the game. Um, if you want to see something like that, I can put in the description or in the comments or somewhere on screen a, a link to a different gameplay that you can watch. But that's not realistic of what you should expect to do uh, as a new player. Uh, when you first start playing as the longbowman but anyway uh i'm gonna play the footage now thanks for watching and i'll see you guys next time 
Okay. We're going to respawn as Archer. So, now that uh, we're back as Archer, we always have to remember we have to maintain our distance between the enemy. So, we want to get within effective range, yet we want to put ourselves in the position where we never get into a melee fight. So, we're going to try and stay at around 20 to 30 meters uh, distance away from the enemy as uh, if we can. So, that's the idea. S second. The second point is we always have to have cover. So, um, this can act as cover, so it will stop arrows. It's a physical barrier between us and the enemy. Otherwise, if there's no cover, we can have concealment. Concealment is like this little this little tree. It won't stop arrows, but what it will do is um, hide us uh, from, from enemies. So we want to be within this effective range, but we also don't want to... Um, What's that word? Be in the position where we can we may get into a melee fight. So we definitely don't want that. So we just keep uh keep pincushioning them. We've been hit by, a, by an enemy arrow. Enemy archer. So now there's uh counter snipers, so that's why the um cover and concealment were very important. It's mainly so we don't get killed by by enemy archers. Like that guy. Oh, that guy's actually free. Nice. Uh, we're about to run out of ammo, so... Let's not grab that one. It's a bit dangerous. I think that guy's, that guy's cheating or something. He's moving super fast. Or maybe like he found a glitch. I don't know. So anyway, we're going to have to move to the next fighting position. I guess behind these rocks is a decent bit of color as well. We have a nice field of view upon the enemy. We set up our, set up our fighting position here. This can be a physical barrier between us and the enemy. And we just keep landing shots on them. This position's lost. We have to be back now. We've, we've been overrun here on the, on the right side. Oh wait, no, no, we're good. We've retaken this land. This, um, this little ramp acts as a bit of elevation for us as well. Which is uh, quite quite useful. We have to be careful this doesn't drop on us. We we'll almost have arrows, so let's move to the next fighting position. It's up there, next to the box. So we gotta, we gotta get going. One, one more shot left. Missed that, unfortunate. Okay, this is the next fighting position. We've got decent cover, we've got decent concealment. And this can give us a bit of high ground as well. Where, are, where is he? Alright, it's not hitting. Oh, sorry, bro. I'm supposed to hit that Vanguard. We're in a melee range now, so we have to abandon that position. We can re try and take it back. Get in a sec. Whoop, sorry. Pick our teammates up. Always important. It's time to move on to the next fighting position. Which is uh, up in here, where the enemy cannot get us, basically. So we're, we're basically safe in here. Take heed. A Mason Ram has reached our gate. So up in this position, we are free to shoot anyone we want without any um, return fire, basically. So it's actually quite overpowered here. What we want to do is uh, focus down enemy vanguards if possible. They uh, they, they don't have any um, well they have lo lower HP compared to like footmen <coughs> and um, knights. So we should prioritize shooting them if we can. Oh. 
uh, whiffing a bit here. Alright, this position's lost. It's time to move on to the next fighting position. We can uh, grab, grab some arrows along the way as well. The next bit of cover and concealment is probably over here. We can fight from here for a little bit. We can just lose some arrows in that general direction. Oh. I did not expect that to block an arrow. Okay, let's just grab arrows and keep falling back to the next position. Probably here. The enemies have to run through a choke to get to us. We'll stand here for a bit of elevation, so we can shoot the, the masons, as they come. There's a ballista there now, slightly dangerous. Oh no, sorry bro. Keep moving backwards, and um, we, we keep doing um some, uh, what's it called, hot shots at the enemy, get our damage in. Getting chased, so let's just run out of combat. <coughs> so this is the next good fighting position, just here. We have a clear line of sight for enemy avenues of approach, which is here, here, and here. And we got a good cover as well, so that's pretty good. We're getting pushed from this left side now. If we need to, we can always pull back to, to this fighting position as well. This has fantastic cover uh, for us. But um, I don't think it's necessary right now. So we're going to move back towards the, the main statue. Okay, we're gonna fall back to this position now. It's getting a bit, uh... What's it called? A bit dicey inside the town center. We're getting our shots from over here. I got into our fighting position. Uh, we also have two clear avenues of, of retreat as well. You can run this way or run that way if we ever need to. Oh, oh that was the teammate. He was covered in blood. Thought he was a mason. We gotta prepare the retreat. We've been, we been getting overrun here. We'll move on to our next fighting position, probably over here. To be honest. Okay, we need to move it back a bit further now. We didn't put pressure too much. Wary of the counter archer. I think he's got his sights trained on us. Keep keep up with the the fighting retreat. Curses! 
Okay. Out ammo. Gonna run towards the next point. I don't know if my mic was off the whole time. If it was, um, I'm just gonna have to put in a voiceover. We got 42 takedowns, four kills, so not great. We can use uh, our teammates' thing here for some height advantage. <laughs> so our biggest uh, enemy uh, is enemy archers, essentially. We still need that bit of cover and concealment, so we've got cover here. Let's go to Warbo, we gotta be careful. Definitely gotta get closer towards our, our opponents. Be a bit more useful. I'm gonna pull back. Be warned! The Masons are within our walls! Defend the trebuchet! They must remain firing upon their ships! We'll pull back now. Can't help him. Oh, we, we can't fight him. Ah, uh, that was too many. <laughs> gonna, gonna do anything about that, actually.
what we can do is um prioritize shooting um the the vanguards but that that requires a bit of effort and i don't think it's worth investing that much effort into shooting a specific type of enemy <clears throat> Unfortunately, I just ran out of ammo. So, I mean, we did a decent amount of damage that game. We got 62 takedowns, only 9 kills, and 3 deaths. One of it because we had to suicide at the start. So, I guess we can do a lot of damage. We just don't get that many kills with the um, with the short bow. Alrighty, guys, we're jumping into a fresh game. I just respawned as the, uh, the longbowman. And I just wanted to show you guys what you can look forward to in, um, in unlocking. Um, when it comes to like the the wobbo i'm gonna be trying to um oh, not get shot by enemy archers there's a crossbowman behind behind the rocks there There we go. We also have to stay within our like 20 to 30 meter engagement distance to be like really effective. This blockhouse is about to go down. That shot just went right through him. This weapon is just so much more powerful than, than the, the, the shot though.
Healing power has just gone up like so drastically um, by just swapping this weapon. Okay, well this game ended already, so... 16 and 10. We got way more kills in this short of time compared to um, using the, uh, the short bow.